Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I shall be showing you how to calculate what your sewing pattern cup size is, how to use that with a given pattern that you've chosen and whether you need to do a full bust adjustment or a small bust adjustment. I'll be showing you how to do those adjustments also. So grab a pattern that you have, which has a side bust dart. So coming from the side seam, pointing up towards your bust. For the purposes of this example, I shall be using my Riviera cami pattern. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to calculate what our sewing pattern cup size is. Now, what does that actually mean? It's quite misleading because your sewing pattern cup size has nothing to do with your bra cup size. So let's have a look at how we find out what cup size you are. You will need your high bust measurement and your full bust measurement. So let me show you how to take those measurements. So grab a tape measure and slip this right around your body under the armpit. So you want to get this right under your armpits. You don't want to pull it tight, you just want it to be against your skin. And when you're doing this, make sure that you're wearing the underwear that you plan to wear with the garments that you're making. So you can get as close a measurement as you will have when you're wearing those garments. So take that measurement and write that down. That's going to be your high bust measurement. For some people, the tape measure will be quite angled. For some, it will be straighter. Don't worry about that. This one should just fit under your armpits. And then the next measurement that you need is your full bust measurement. So this is around the fullest part of your bust. And again, don't pull it too tight. Have your arms relaxed. Whenever you're doing any of these body measurements, you should just have your arm relaxed down by your side. You do want this tape to be as parallel as possible to the floor. So do this in front of a mirror so that you can make sure that you have that positioning correct. And then make a note of that measurement. Now, take your full bust measurement, so the biggest measurement, and minus that from your high bust measurement. And depending on what the difference is, that will give you what your cup size is. So if the difference between these two measurements is one inch, then that puts you at an A cup. If the difference is a two inch, then that puts you at a B cup. If the difference is three inches, that puts you at a C cup. And a D, oops, four inches is a D cup. Now the most common is the two inch difference, B cup. And that's where most of these sewing patterns will be designed. So if your sewing pattern doesn't say what cup size it is, or if there aren't any alternatives, assume that it is a B cup, which is designed for somebody who has a two inch difference between their high bust and their full bust. Okay, so now that you've worked that out, how do you work out which size you should make? Now, if you have a choice of cups, then you won't need to do any sort of adjustments. So you can choose the different cup sizes that are provided with your pattern. However, my pattern, for instance, only comes in a B cup. So I'm gonna give you some example measurements here. Let's do a working example. So let's imagine that the high bust measurement of this person is 34 inches and the full bust is 38 inches. So the difference between those two measurements is four inches. So let's have a look at this. If I went with the full bust measurement of this person, that would land me at a UK 14, which is 38 inches. But the difference between the high and the full bust is four inches, whereas the pattern is only designed for a difference of two inches. Now, if we simply went with the 38 inches, what would happen? So it would fit around the bust. However, you would find that the shoulders, the armholes, the neck may not fit you as well, even the waist as well, because we've tried to accommodate the fullness of the bust. However, it's also made it bigger everywhere else. And that's because the difference between the high and the full bust is more than the pattern cup size. So it's more than this two inches. So here, what we do 
is we take our high bust measurement, which is 34 inches, and we add on the two inches, which is what is already included within the pattern for this B cup. So that gives us a total of 36 inches. There's still a difference of two inches between these two measurements. So let's have a look at the body measurements again. At 36 inches, that would make a UK size 12. So that feels about right. So that means that that will fit around the neck and the armholes and the shoulders, but we still need to add some ease in for the actual round of the bust. Now I'm gonna show you, in this case, we would need to do a full bust adjustment. So let me take you through how we do that. Now, the first things that you need to do is you need to identify on the pattern which is the size that you want to trace off. So follow your line of the size that you have chosen and let's either trace that out or you can cut out your exact pattern. All you need right now is the front pattern piece. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to calculate where the apex point is on this dart. So find the middle of your dart and continue, draw from the side point here all the way along and just continue this line on a little bit. Now, typically the apex point on a pattern can be anywhere between half an inch to two inches and it all depends on how that particular designer has designed the pattern. So you won't be able to exactly know where that apex point is and that's why twirling is really important. So these adjustments will only take you so far. Remember that everybody is individual and therefore you may need to do some further adjustments once you've done this. However, by doing a full bust or a small bust adjustment, you will then eliminate the need to have to change the armhole, the shoulder, the neck in every case. This is one adjustment that will hopefully get you closer to that ideal fit. What you can do to work out where the apex point is, is you can actually measure your own apex points. Now, what is the apex? The apex is actually the fullest point of your bust and it's the measurement from one side to the other of those fullest points. So you can basically measure from around about where maybe your nipples are or where the fullest point of your bust is and just measure across and take a note of what that measurement is. Take that measurement and divide that by half. Now, the reason that we're dividing it by half is because this is all only working on one half of the pattern and that's what we always do in pattern cutting. So, in my example, I have worked out that my um, apex points are around four inches. So what you can do to try and get this as accurate as possible, you can measure from the centre front to around four inches and where that actually meets the line that you have just drawn. So there we go. And you can see, just to double check that, that that's actually an inch away from the end of the dark point. So the end of the dark point is not the fullest point on your body. You don't want that to go to the fullest point of your body because otherwise you end up with the sort of more pointy shape like a Madonna-esque fit. Right, so here we go. This is where we are going to put our apex point. Now, down from that apex point, <clears throat> parallel with your grain line, I want you to draw a straight line going all the way down. There we go. And then this is your armhole here. And what I want you to do is I want you to just add in the seam allowance. Now on my pattern, for instance, the seam allowance is one and a half centimetres. You don't need to do this all the way along. Just do this along the third, which is the closest to the side seam. And then approximately find where this armhole third is. And draw a line which goes through that seam allowance. Now, we're gonna start cutting this pattern. So start from the hem and cut all the way along that line that you drew. Go through the apex point but stop when you get 
of your seam allowance line and I'll explain why later. And then from the side along this dart, cut towards the apex point, but do not cut through. We want to keep this point, this piece attached. So leave a few millimetres there. And then come from the other side and just cut into this seam allowance area. But again, do not separate those pieces. You want to keep them attached. Okay, so now you've got your pattern. It's been cut in multiple places. Let's go back to our measurements here. So we calculated that this pattern gets us as far as 36 inches on the bust. So the difference between 38 and 36 inches is two inches. Now, remember I said that we're working on the half of the pattern, therefore you need to take two inches, divide it by two to give you a half, and that's a one inch. So we need to now accommodate one inch of fullness, which will give us a total of two inches across the front. So how do we do that? Draw yourself a straight line on another piece of paper. And then draw another line, which is one inch away from that parallel. So one inch or two and a half centimetres away. And then place your centre front pattern piece on top of this line here. And just line that up with your first line. And just pop a little bit of tape there just to secure it in place. You can tape it or you can pin it, whatever you find easiest. And then with this second piece, what you want to do is you want to bring that parallel. And in order to do that, you're going to be spreading open that dart. That's how we're going to create space for your bust. So doing this allows more space in the width and more space in the length of the pattern as well. So here we go. Get that as close as possible to your one inch gap. There you go. Take these pieces down and you can see here at the top of the armhole why we needed to keep that point there attached. So by keeping that attached, the actual length of that stitch line has not increased or decreased, whereas this line has moved. So that's why we needed to add that extra cut so that it could actually pivot. And then we're going to just stick down our little dart end points here. Now you can see here that the bottom of this top has become shorter on the front than the side. So what we need to do here is simply draw a line which is horizontal to your grain line and then cut along there. And then we want to move this piece down and this is giving you that extra length that you will require to go over the round of the bust. So I'm just putting my pattern master there just to give me a guide of how far I need to move it down so that you end up with a nice smooth curve. So line that up with your straight edge there. And now you can see it's all level at the bottom. You've got a bigger dart and you've allowed for extra space on the front of your body here. So now what we need to do is we need to find the new end of this dart point. So continue on the original dart legs that you can see here. This is a rough estimate of where this dart point will be. Again, you will need to twirl it to see how that sits on you. You can see here that this dart is much wider now, which means that if you were to just fold this like we would traditionally on a dart, you may end up with too much bulky fabric. So you do have an option here. You can add on some seam allowance here and turn this into a cutaway dart. So just add on your seam allowance. In my case, that's one and a half centimetres, and then that would be a cutaway dart. And then I'll show you how to true that dart on the next step.
Before we true that dart, you may find that by increasing the space to go over your bust, you've also increased the width at the hem. And if this is a dress, for instance, or something where you don't want as much fullness around your tummy, you may want to bring this in a little bit. So the way that you can do that is we added in an inch along here across the bottom. So you can simply just take that inch there, put a little mark, and you can draw a line with a gentle curve down to that measurement. And then you're just taking that off the side there and it will help to make it a little bit fitted. You know, you don't want to add in too much around the, or take away too much from the bust. So you can simply just a nice smooth line there and that will just curve that back in there for you. Now you've seen here that the armhole shape has also become quite jaggedy here so you don't want to change this measurement here because this corresponds to your back piece so the simple thing to do here is just to re-smooth that curve so take your French curve or a pattern master and just join this line up here and that will be your new cut line here that'll make that nice and smooth if you did the difference between these two you would end up making this a little bit too short and that would cause you problems when you come to attach it to your back piece Truing the dart is basically making it ready for you to be able to sew it so that all the fabric lines up in the right place. So let's have a look at what we have here. So first thing we need to do is pop a crease along that new dart leg that you drew right to the end and do the same on the other side. Draw a line down the middle of this dart because this will be where you will actually fold your piece of paper. And now fold along that. Now, you know, this is much easier in fabric because fabric is a lot more pliable. But you can see there, we open that out and those lines all match up and you have then created essentially out of a 2D piece of paper, your 3D dart. Now, when you do darts, you need to position the fabric pointing down away from your armpit in this particular case. So pop that going down. And just check that your lines all match up. Have a look at the front there. They're going to be your stitch lines. So you want to make sure that it all matches up. There you go, you can see. And what I like to do is I just pop a little pin there in place. Keep it there. Now you may have a lot to trim off. You may not have very much to trim off. In my particular case here, you can see that there's only a little bit that needs to come off. And then that makes that really straight and well aligned to the side seam. Obviously, this is the top where I didn't adjust the side. So if you did want to have that curve in there to make it narrower at the waist, you would need to trim off more of your dart. But let's put that in actually. That will help you to see a little bit more what the dart leg could look like. So let's trim that off there. You can see how much extra we would have of the dart so you would need to trim that off so that when you sew that you know exactly where your fabric needs to match up to there we go so let's unpin that and there you have it your new dart shape 
So now you have your perfectly executed full bust adjustment. So the next thing you need to do is make a twirl so that you can make sure that this feels exactly correct for you. There may be some further adjustments that you need to do, but you're well on your way now to getting a garment which fits you better. So now let's show you if you need to do a small bust adjustment. For a small bust adjustment, you need exactly the same measurements as we did for a full bust adjustment. So we need our high bust and our full bust. Again, I'll take you through a working example. So let's assume that the high bust on this person is 31 inches and the full bust is 32 inches. So the difference between the biggest measurement take away the smallest measurement is a total of one inches. And when we have a look at our sewing pattern cup size chart, we know that that puts this person within an A cup. But we know that the pattern that we're working with is generally for a B cup, and that's the average of most sewing patterns. So what do we do? Let's have a look here. The sewing pattern includes two inches for the cup size, but we only need one inch. So what we would do is two inch, take away one inch, leaves us a difference of one inch. Therefore, that means that we need to reduce our pattern across the full front by one inch. And because we're only working on the half, we're gonna do a half an inch adjustment. So one inch divided by two equals half an inch or 1.25 centimeters. So that will be the adjustment that we're gonna do. Trace off your pattern piece uh, corresponding to the size that you need. And let's start by working out where our apex point is. So the apex point is the fullest part of your bust. So find the middle of the dart and go straight through the dart end point. Continue your line on around an inch, an inch and a half beyond that point. To work out where your apex point is. Generally on a sewing pattern, it is somewhere between half an inch to two inches away from the dart end point. And this all depends on how the pattern designer has designed it. So you can actually have a bit more of an accurate guess to make it suitable for you by measuring the distance between your apex points. So the fullest part of your bust, which might be where your nipples are, or it might just be the fullest part. So take that measurement and divide that in two. Once you've got that measurement, place your tape at the centre front and then mark where that is on your pattern and where that actually meets the line that you've drawn, which is the middle of the dart point. So in this case, I'm marking this at four inches. And generally, as you can see, this is around an inch away from the end of where that dart point was actually originally planned to be. So now that you've created your apex point here, draw a straight line down from that apex point, going all the way down to the hem, parallel to the grain. And then the next thing I want you to do is I want you to add the seam allowance in to where the armhole seam is here. And the reason that you want to do this is because you want you don't want to adjust the actual length of this area when you make your adjustment. Locate approximately the third of this arm and draw a line from your apex point all the way up to the edge there. Now take a pair of scissors and cut up from the hem along this line here. All the way through the apex point and then up to stopping at where your seam allowance line is. And then take your scissors and cut from the dart end point towards the apex but stopping short of that apex point. You don't want to go through. And then do another cut from the raw edge here towards that seam allowance stitch line, but do not cut through. Okay, let's go back to our measurements here. So you can see that we need to do a half an inch adjustment. We want to make this smaller by half an inch. Draw a line on a piece of paper and position your center front piece along this line. You can take this down.
And now draw another line, this time on this actual center front piece, which is at half an inch or 1.25 centimeters. So draw this nice and straight, keeping it parallel to your cut line. I'm going to draw that all the way up there. And then what you want to do is you want to move this side piece over this, lining it up with that straight line. And in order to do that, you will be closing up some of this dart. Just play around with it. You don't want to adjust your armhole too much. So you want to try and get that as flat as possible. And that's where doing that little cut there has really helped because you can get an extra little pivot there. You can see that feels about good to me. So I'm going to take that down or you can pin it down. So you can see here, as I've stuck this down, that my dart has become much, much smaller and that this side has actually become shorter. So what we need to do is we need to draw a line on this side here, on the center front side, going across. It's horizontal to the grain line and we're going to move this piece up. So this way we're reducing the fullness going down over the bust and we're also reducing the fullness across the width. So this should give you a better fit. And now what you want to do is you simply want to move this piece up until your hem lines line up nice and neatly there we go so we've reduced some of the length we've also reduced some of the width here and again you can see that there is a bit of a difference here in the armhole shape so you just need to redraw that curve to the new shape now that you've done this you may find that you've actually made it a little bit too tight going across your waist so we took out 1.25 centimetres from here. You can now add this back in onto the side seam. And you can do this either with a straight going from the dart or you can add in a curve if you prefer. So I'm just going to put a straight line in there. So recurve your hem a little bit. So now I'm going to show you how to true the dart. So I have traced off that pattern because it makes it a lot easier to be able to true the dart. I've left a little bit extra here on the side because we might need that. So find the middle of your dart. So this dart here is three centimetres, so the middle is one and a half centimetres. I'm going to find the middle and draw a line along there. And then I'm going to fold a little fold line in this first dart leg here and do the same for the top dart leg and then fold this in the middle until those two lines meet. It's quite fiddly in paper because obviously fabric is a lot more flexible and then what you want to do is you want to push all of this downwards away from the armpit because that's what you will also do with your fabric. Make sure that the folds are still on your stitch lines on the dart legs there. There you go, you can pop a little pin in there to hold that in place. And then simply trim away all of this excess here. And then open that out and there you go you now have your new dart shape thank you very much for watching this tutorial i hope you found it helpful i have been mandy from make with mandy i hope to see you again take care